So we made it out here to the job site uh, super early in the morning. Like I said, today we're doing the ceramic coating on a massive, a massive new Peterbilt. So should be fun. I brought a step ladder just so I could reach the actual roof of this sucker. Yeah, this paint's uh not bad. It's not in bad shape. Um, we got a couple stickers to remove. Uh, we're gonna do a quick one step on it before we actually put the coating on just to help the coating bond a little bit better um, And then we'll probably put a little bit of rain -X on the windshield for them, but other than that Yeah, let's go. Uh, I'll show you guys the setup uh, setup process and yeah So that's pretty much everything that I kind of keep in the car. I'll kind of go around and show you guys what it's what it's all about. So we've got our three bucket system here: wheels, wash, rinse. And then here we've got a bucket full of O&R, which actually is full of ice water. I'll talk more on that later. We've got our compressor. We've got hoses for the pressure washer, undercarriage rinser, one more hose because the hose connection is a little bit too far away to reach here. Um, got my pressure washer gun. This is the MTM SGS 28. Um, really, really like it. It's got the solar head on it. I got my detail cart with the drawer and stuff, some accessories in the drawer. I've got my coatings bin with all our coating stuff in it. 
got my pads um, for polishing. We got our um, polishers in here, polishes in here. We got all of our chemicals. This is our chemical bin. This is what we call our A towels. These are for our um, painted surfaces and uh, more delicate finishes. These are what we call our B towels. You know, for wheels, engines, um, and also you know most of the interiors. Um, they're all color coded and things so that we don't cross contaminate. And that's pretty much it. This is kind of like the um, the setup. We've got a shade inside the car, some lighting, um, some other things just to make the whole paint polishing process a little bit easier on us. But uh, that's that's most of uh, what we've got set. Alrighty, so just gonna fill up the buckets um, to get started first. Obviously, we're gonna fill up all of our wash buckets, our rinse buckets. Um, then, as a soap that we're gonna be using, we're gonna be using PNS Pearl. Um, we're gonna end up putting that in the wash bucket and inside of the wheel bucket. Alrighty, so for um, right now while I'm setting up uh, my buckets, let me talk a little bit about the two products that we're using um, to clean the wheels. Um, so I'm going to be using Brake Buster diluted one to one. Um, I've got a foaming trigger sprayer on there. I've been testing out the Tolco foaming sprayer um, versus the regular sprayer to decide which one I like more for Brake Buster. Um, and I'll let you guys just know uh, what I've decided on that. But I'm using that um, and Iron Buster as well to dissolve any embedded iron particles on the wheels as they are wheels. Um, and so that's going to be the setup there. So once we get ready, we're just going to rinse down the wheel. Super, super simple. Um, you guys have seen me do this a million times. Uh, quite literally, we'll rinse off the wheel, get you know as much dirt as possible. Um, and um, with this being a semi truck, the fender wells are very big and very dirty, and it's all kind of kind of crazy. So. Right now I'm just kind of trying to decide like the best plan of action, um, what can I actually clean, what should I just leave, um, and forgive the GoPro angle guys, um, this is just uh, the first time I've actually used a GoPro uh, to film me working, so it's a little bit, a little bit weird in some spots, um, but yeah. As you can see, I went ahead and grabbed my Meguiar's APC um, to clean the fenders, um, just because I like that really well on all those kinds of fenders and things to dissolve brake, brake dust if it's there. I mean, just really, mostly it's going to be dirt that's on there, so it does a great job of that. Uh, I'm using my Will Faces brush to just agitate all these plastics because that's, you know, that's got the best uh, reach there. And then I go ahead and agitate the wheels with that brush after dipping it in the bucket to rinse it off. Um, so then I'm going to go ahead and grab my tire brush. Uh, this is a stiff bristle tire brush. Uh, gonna completely clean the tires, restore them back to a black look. Um, just a nice matte black factory OEM tire, clean tire look. Um, and then I'm just grabbing my mother's long handle wheel brush and I'm gonna clean the fender wells as best as I can. Um, they're pretty they're pretty gunked up. Uh, a lot of mud, tar, sticky, go goopy crap in there as you can see. You can see how brown the cleaner turned but uh, just doing my best to reach in there. Um, like I said, this is a ceramic coating job, um, but you know, with all ceramic coating jobs, we go ahead and give the whole, the whole car uh, wash down. And you know, even though this is a big old semi truck, that's you know, no difference. Uh, we're still going to give the whole, whole truck a wash down. So that's the that's kind of the wheel process. We're going to try to get all the the extra kind of areas rinsed down while we're doing the wheels, but. Yeah, enjoy watching me clean the rest of the wheels.
Alrighty, so I wanted to just um, go ahead and interrupt again here. You can see that I actually went ahead and cleaned like all the lifting systems and those types of things just really lightly with my McGuire's APC again. Um, and that wheel face was brushed just because they were, you know, they were a little bit dirty. That box was a little bit dirty. And I just, you know, wanted to get everything clean as clean as possible just to give, you know, a good result. Make sure the whole truck's clean. So, um, in case you're wondering, the Meguiar's APC is diluted about 5 to 1 in this case. That's how I normally use it, is diluted about 5 to 1. And I go through gobs and gobs of this stuff. It's absolutely, it's my favorite all-purpose cleaner that I've ever used. Um, and it's, you know, it's pretty decently priced. Um, shipping it can be a little bit expensive or a little bit slow, um, just because it's considered a hazardous material, but it's fine. All right, so if you notice, I just grabbed a product um, and I'm spraying it on the actual painted box and rinsing it off. And you'll see there's a little bit of water beading that starts to pop up. That's because the product that I'm using is Gion Wet Coat. It's an SIOT based product. It sprays on, rinses off, and leaves some ceramic protection behind. Um, I didn't charge the customer for this service because it takes me literally two seconds and I just do it with you know every ceramic coating if they're not doing a wheel ceramic coating. so. I went ahead and did that on the wheels and on this black box and I did that on the same because there's there's the same setup on the other side where there's a black box and the wheels so just went ahead and used wet coat on both sides. Uh, wet coat can last you know about up to three months, three to six months generally depending on uh, how well it bonds to the actual materials but you'll see it it beads just like a full 9 inch ceramic coating would so super great product um, and I love it a lot for wheel applications um, and even paint sometimes. So. All right, now moving on to the uh, from the wheels to the wash process, uh, we're gonna just rinse the paint down top to bottom like we normally would any other car, any other paint, just you know top to bottom. Um, obviously, I had to use a ladder for the big behemoth of a truck because uh, otherwise I would not have been able to reach the roof at all. Um, but that's that. So go ahead, give it a thorough rinse. Um, this is just to remove any standing dirt uh, that may be able to be, be removed from there, um, just easily with a rinse. Then I move on to foaming the vehicle. Um, I am foaming it with PNS Pearl and Dawn dish soap, a 50-50 mix. Um, normally I don't use dish soap on cars. However, when I'm prepping them, I will use a 50-50 mix of car soap and dish soap to break down any waxes, um, sealants, anything that's actually on the paint. It'll also start to break down bugs, road grime, and tar. So, as you notice, I sprayed a little bit of APC on the front because there was definitely some bugs on there um, just to seriously help me break down those bugs. Now I'm just going to use a bug sponge and uh, go at the bugs on the front of the truck. Um, this is my typical method for getting bugs is just McGuire's APC and Bug Sponge. He does a great job. Um, so yeah, but next up I'm going to grab my wash mitt. We are using the two bucket method um, and uh, it takes a little bit of time on this truck just again because it is so big, but doing a two bucket wash on it. And this is just going to get the paint clean. Um, so that we can do a decontamination stage, which will happen just a little bit later. The decontamination stage is just going to be, um, again, just getting the paint ready for the ceramic coating. This is what all this is doing. Um, is just we're just getting the paint ready for the ceramic coating here.
Alrighty, so this is normally the point um, in any wash where the wash is actually going to be done, where we start rinsing the car, um, and then we dry it. However, when we're prepping a car for coating, or even for sealant, um, this is not where we want to start. We want to start with a decontamination stage. Um, so, some people may or may not know this, but you actually get contamination that embeds itself into the clear coat of your paint. Um, and that is not going to be removed with just a regular wash. Um, so it's going to be things like industrial fallout, iron particles from your brakes or rail dust. You know, if you take um, a route to work on your commute that's, you know, over train tracks or if you park near a train tra station, you're going to get a lot more rail dust. Um, and these will just look like orange iron particles on white paint. On darker color paint, you're never going to see them. Um, but they are there and they do prevent uh, waxes and things from bonding to it. So that's what we're going to do next is we're going to actually remove those iron particles and then we're going to remove the rest of the particles which include tar and the industrial fallout and just all kinds of other things that actually just physically embed themselves into the clear coat of the paint and they can't be removed with just a wash. So I will talk a little bit about the process of removing these, um, the first thing we're gonna do is the chemical decontamination. The chemical decontamination consists of using an iron remover, which sprays on clear, and then it dissolves embedded iron particles. As it dissolves those particles, it's gonna change color and start to turn purple. Um, as it turns purple, you know that the product is working. You let it sit for three to five minutes, and it's going to have a chemical reaction that dissolves those iron particles, and then you just rinse it away. The one I use today, um, is Iron Buster from PNS. It's a brand new product, just came out. Um, I've been testing it out a lot and I actually really, really love it. Um, it smells much better than most iron removers and it's fairly decently priced. So here you can actually see me spraying it on. Um, when you're spraying an iron remover on, you wanna spray it on pretty freaking liberally um, just because you're trying to decontaminate the paint. You're trying to get all of that contamination off there. Now, iron removers are pretty expensive. They run anywhere from 60 to $120 a gallon based on the iron remover you're using. So, you know, it it eats at me because you can't dilute them and you have to spray them on liberally. But if you're a pro detailer, just put it into your cost. If you're um, just a regular detailer, just know that you have to do that. Um, now here you'll see, after I fixed my camera, you can see all that purple bleeding that we call it, us and us detailers, we call it bleeding, where the iron actually is being dissolved. And you can see those purple, um, literally looks like bleeding. You can see those purple particles being dissolved off of the paint. And then we go ahead and actually rinse those off. And then is the clay stage. So I skipped a little bit. Um, I just rinsed that off and then refilmed the car. And with that foam, I'm now using as a clay lubricant. Again, the clay is just going to act like, think of it as exfoliating your face, except for your car paint. So it's actually just gonna pull those rest of those embedded contaminants right out of the paint. Again, helping, in this case, the ceramic coating to bond better to the clear coat. So there's nothing interfering in between the actual coating and the paint so that the ceramic coating can actually bond to the substrates that are in the paint. So I'm just using a speedy surface prep clay towel. It's a fine grade clay towel. Um, it doesn't introduce much marring, if any at all. Um, most of the time I don't notice any marring, even on soft black paint, I haven't noticed it mar. So I think it's a great clay towel. You get, you know, roughly 50 cars out of it. So it's a great value. Um, yeah. So next we're just gonna be doing our final rinse and then our dry. So this is just gonna be very, very simple rinsing again top to bottom getting all the soap off of the paint and then we're gonna be drying with a dry me a river, river towel from the rag company that's a waffle weave towel um, it's just big absorbent and perfect for this kind of application
So let's talk a little bit here about what the next steps are gonna involve. So normally for a ceramic coating, um, the cat's kind of, well, the jury's still out on whether or not you need a polish um, before a ceramic coating in order to allow it to bond to the paint properly. Some people say yes, some people say no. I'm one of those people that I would rather polish just to be safe rather than sorry, even if I'm not searching to remove defects. So in this case, it's a work truck. So I'm not searching, I'm not looking to remove defects. I'm not gonna charge my customer $2,000 to get all the swirls. You know, there's not very many of them, but to get any swirls that might be in the paint out of it because it's it's a, it's a semi truck, it's, it's not gonna have showroom quality paint. If I were to take out all the swirls, they'd be back, you know, there'd be scratches and dents and dings and stuff. They, they, they'd all come back, so. Um, what I'm doing is I'm using a Rupes yellow pad and CarPro, oh, what's it called? CarPro Essence, yes, CarPro Essence. So it's actually a ceramic coating primer. Um, it's a very, very mild finishing polish. And when paired with the Rupes yellow pad or the CarPro gloss pad, it's gonna give really good gloss. Um, well, most importantly, it's gonna get the coating actually ready to be applied. So what I'm doing is I'm quickly polishing the paint, just quickly doing a one step with that combination in order to get the paint ready um, to accept the coating because, you know, depending on who you ask, you really need to polish the paint in order for the paint to correctly accept the coating um, just so you can get those dead and dried out paint layers off before you actually put a ceramic coating onto the paint. Now on to the actual coating process. So the first thing we need to do is spray it down with CarPro Eraser. This is an intensive oil and polish remover. It's gonna get the paint super, super clean. No residues from polishing are gonna be left over, so it's gonna be ready to actually accept the coating. So first things first is we're gonna dab a little bit of coating on our applicator. You didn't see it, but I did it. And now in straight lines in a cross hash motion, we're gonna apply the coating as level as possible. Um, this is just going to save, you know, time and energy when you're actually doing the leveling process. Here you can see me checking out uh, what the flash time is going to be. And my flash time in this case was about a minute for it. Um, in case you're wondering, we're installing CarPro Seaports UK 3.0 in this scenario. So for leveling, we're going to use our first towel to level to um, the majority of the coating and then a second towel to actually get the finer details and make sure it's perfect. So that is pretty much the coating application and um, it's it it's simple but the first time you do it you're gonna end up with high spots almost almost definitely um, and it gets it gets easier with time but yeah. Alrighty guys, so, alright, job's done, uh, whole truck's coated, 
Um, it's looking pretty stellar. I mean, white paint's white paint, you know, it's not gonna look like, you know, black paint will when it's coated, but man, it does look good still. Um, it's quite the job, but uh, all in all, the whole thing looks pretty great, so here's what it looks like. Super clean, freshly ceramic coated. So yeah, this is the first, uh, you know, big truck that we've actually ceramic coated, you know, um, before this. I've never done, you know, like a, like a semi, so it's kind of a new one, but it was a lot of fun. Um, definitely some hard work, uh, but yeah, it actually used um, less coating than I was expecting. I bought a 50 mil bottle for this one. I was expecting to use about half. I used a third something like that which actually wasn't bad um it looks big but it's not that much more paint than an average suv would be um but it's just like a matter of having to get on top of a ladder and that kind of stuff to actually get into places that's why it takes so long that kind of stuff but it looks really good um i'm pleased with the way it came out uh, i think it looks I think it looks great, and I think it'll be protected for years to come. So, um, I got a little bit, you know, tired at the end. Uh, you know, the heat gets to you while you're out here. So, um, I didn't film a ton of the actual coating process, nor did I film a ton of actually putting. I don't think I even filmed at all putting reload on the end of it. But uh, that's for another time, another day. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do that because today was a little hot. But yeah. So if you guys like watching these kinds of videos, let me know, and I can do like day in the life vlogs more often of, you know, just every day on the job, or, um, you know, also you could, uh, you know, I can do, you know, how-tos of ceramic coatings, how-tos of paint polishing, and, you know, what different methods of paint polishing yield what different results, and these kinds of things, you know, and uh, just the different things that we might pursue for you know the paint polishing that kind of stuff so let me know in the comments uh what you what you liked about it what you didn't like about it um and you know all that kind of stuff but yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna finish getting all this crap shoved back in my car um it's a miracle that i can load so much stuff into the honda pilot um but yeah uh thank you guys for watching i'll catch you next time peace out